Welcome back to Superb Sports Media. It's been another year of exciting and unpredictable NBA basketball. I am Hookshot Drew, and I'll be taking you back down memory lane as we return today with our third annual History of the NBA Finals, this time featuring the Denver Nuggets and Miami Heat. This year's NBA Finals certainly has a different flavor to it. The Celtics and Lakers have squared off many times in the past to the NBA's most famous rivalry, and the Cavaliers and Warriors did battle several times in a row throughout the past decade. But this new look finals features two teams with very different histories when it comes to the big dance. Uh, real quick side note here, if you love our content, please like, comment, share, subscribe with all of your friends, and stay tuned for more. While the Heat have had many great players throughout the history who have helped them hoist that Larry O'Brien trophy, such as Dwayne Wade, LeBron, Shaq, and many others, there's one man who's been the chief architect of hardwood success in South Beach, Pat Riley. Counting this season, Miami has now appeared in the NBA Finals seven times, 2006, 2011 through 2014, 2020, and now 2023, winning titles in 06, 2012, and 2013. The Heat may have won their first title in 2006, but the road to championship gold was not expected, nor was it easy. Many in the South Florida media were critical of the way Pat Riley had retooled and rebuilt the team following a massive multi-team trade. This trade brought in all-star players such as Antoine Walker, Jason Williams, and James Posey to join Shaq and Dwayne Wade. But many in the media wondered if this new look team would be able to gel or if they would have any good chemistry together. After a concerning 11-10 start to the 2006 season, it looked as though Riley's critics might be right. Desperate times called for desperate measures, and the Godfather stepped out of the shadows to take over for a struggling Stan Van Gundy. This proved to be the coaching change the Heat needed as the team caught fire and rolled to a solid 52-30 record. Miami then upset Detroit in the Eastern Conference Finals and were pitted against the Dallas Mavericks in the 2006 NBA Finals. Dallas hammered Miami in the first two games of the series to take a commanding 2-0 lead right out of the gate. But the Heat soldiered on, winning Game 3 thanks to Gary Payton's clutch jumper and then blowing the Mavs out at home in Miami in Game 4 to even the series. Miami then proceeded to win a pair of nail biters in Game 5 and Game 6 to beat Dallas and win their first ever NBA championship. Dwayne Wade averaged nearly 35 points per game during the series and was named the NBA Finals Most Valuable Player. The 2006 Heat became only the third team in NBA history up to that point to win the NBA Finals after falling into an 0-2 hole, joining the 1969 Boston Celtics and the 77 Portland Trail Blazers. Miami would struggle for several years after this, with Pat Riley being forced to rebuild the team yet again. But the Heat's next run of final success would be headlined by one of the most controversial Big Three lineups in NBA history. Following LeBron's much-publicized decision to leave the Cleveland Cavaliers for the Miami Heat in the summer of 2010, Miami came out of the rebuilding process looking stronger than ever, with James Wade and Chris Bosh leading the team. Not two, not three, not four, not five. While LeBron's prediction of a dynasty in South Beach ultimately did not come true, the Big Three started off their time together in style, posting a 58-24 record and bringing basketball fever back to South Florida. Things went so well for the Heat that they cruised to the NBA Finals in 2011. Miami defeated Philly, Boston, and Chicago all in five games to set up a Finals rematch with Dirk Nowitzki and the Dallas Mavericks. But unlike in 2006, Miami would ultimately come up short, falling to Dallas in six games. This loss was especially bitter for the Heat as they had been the heavy favorites coming into the series and a season that was widely considered to be championship or bust. The following season, Miami came back with a vengeance. Although they had finished second in the East during the regular season, Miami once again proved that they were the best team in the conference by powering through the playoffs. They defeated the Knicks in five games, beat the Pacers in six, and edged out the Boston Celtics in seven to set up a finals matchup with the Kevin Durant-led Oklahoma City Thunder. After dropping Game 1 of the 2012 Finals, Miami rattled off four straight wins in a hard-fought series of close games to capture their second title in franchise history, with LeBron James earning the first NBA Finals MVP of his career. 2013 was a scorching hot, record-setting season for Miami in many ways. The Heat finished that season with a franchise record 66 wins in the regular season and the best record in the league. In the middle of the season, they also reeled off 27 wins in a row, which is currently the third longest winning streak in NBA history. They rode their momentum straight into another finals appearance, this time against a veteran San Antonio Spurs team led by coaching legend Greg Popovich. Even though the Heat had earned home court advantage in the finals, this series was more of a slugfest than a cakewalk. 
Both teams threw absolute haymakers and notched blowout victories multiple times in the series. The series went back and forth through the first five games with the Spurs holding a 3-2 lead going into Miami for game six. This game was not only the closest game of the entire series, but is widely considered to be one of the greatest games in NBA history by fans, media, and former NBA players. The Spurs led the majority of the game and were up 94-89 with just under 30 seconds left in regulation. After a wild series of missed shots, rebounds, and LeBron James and Ray Allen each hitting a massive three-pointer, the game went into overtime tied at 95. In overtime, Miami ended up pulling out a thrilling 103-100 win, forcing Game 7 thanks to a huge steal from Ray Allen and a block from Chris Bosh in the closing seconds. LeBron went off for 37 points to help lead the Heat to a 95-88 victory in Game 7, as the team captured their third championship. But this would be the most recent title the Heat would win. The following year, Miami would lose the NBA Finals to the Spurs in disappointing fashion in five games. Following the 2014 NBA season, LeBron returned home to Cleveland to reunite with the Cavaliers. Miami would not appear in another NBA Finals until the 2020 season, but by that point, the team looked drastically different. Many of the players who had formed the 2013 championship team had long left South Beach. Dwayne Wade had retired, as had Chris Bosh, and LeBron had left Cleveland a second time to join the LA Lakers. As fate would have it, the Heat would face LeBron and his new team in the 2020 Finals and fall to the Lakers in six games. Despite having a talented core of players such as Jimmy Butler, Goran Dragic, Tyler Hero, and others, the Heat were no match for a roster headlined by King James, Anthony Davis, and a solid supporting cast. Miami hasn't been able to replicate the dominance they showed in the era of the Big Three, but in 35 years of basketball, they're one of the most successful teams in NBA history. But this is uncharted territory for the Denver Nuggets, who were in their first NBA Finals in franchise history. This year's NBA Finals is the first Finals appearance for Denver and the closest the Nuggets have been to taking home the championship since playing in the 1976 ABA Finals very early in their history. Unfortunately for Denver back then, the Nets and Dr. J were too much for them as they lost that series four games to two. Over their 56-year history, the Nuggets have had some exciting, competitive teams led by the likes of Alex English, Doug Moe, Dikembe Mutombo, and Carmelo Anthony. They've won 12 division titles over the years as well, but they failed to break through until this season. It took over half a century, but they are finally on the NBA's finest stage. But the climb towards greatness has been anything but easy. The Nuggets have slowly built themselves up over the past eight years into a true championship contender under longtime head coach Mike Malone and five-time All-Star and two-time MVP Nikolai Jokic. According to Woody Page, Dr. James Naismith, who once lived a mile away from where Ball Arena currently is, would be proud of the way the Nuggets are playing the game that he invented. Dr. James Naismith, the creator of basketball, would be gratified about how his game is played down the street from his old home, Page said. Historically though, Denver and Miami are two franchises with completely different NBA Finals histories. One has had more than its fair share of its success after being led by several NBA legends. The other is aiming to make their mark on NBA history by bringing home their first Larry O'Brien trophy. One team has been battle tested under the bright lights of the Finals, the other is a hungry, young, Finals upstart. But if there's any chance Denver will finally join other world championship teams, this is probably their best year to make that breakthrough. Fluid passing, high octane offense, stout defense, and deadly accuracy from downtown make the Nuggets an elite basketball team, the complete package, and a clear favorite in this year's NBA Finals. At the time of this video, the series is tied 1-1, one -one, going back to Miami. Making the extra pass, timely three-point shots, and controlling the paint, that appears to be Denver's recipe to bring home the hardware. And to paraphrase Woody Page, perhaps Dr. James Naismith really is there in spirit with the Nuggets as they chase after their first world championship. What do you think? Will Miami add a fourth championship to their storied NBA Finals legacy? Or will Denver reach the summit of NBA basketball greatness? Thanks for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, please share it and smash the like and subscribe buttons and stay tuned for more great content from Superb Sports Media. I am Hookshot Drew and I thank you for spending some of your day here with me today.